Imagine there was a power plant churning 24 seven, creating so much energy that you could leave every single device in your home on nonstop without the worry of them ever dying out. Convenient, right? That is, until you realize that having a toaster on 24 seven is probably gonna lead to more harm than good. And that's exactly what may be happening inside you right here, right now. And why you want to throw some plastic into the mix. What the hell did you just say? No, I mean, not, not literally like plastic into a toaster. D don't do that. It's a metaphor. You you'll see. Yo, yo, yo. What is up? Welcome back to another week of How to Health. My name is Kevin. I run liftandbalance.com where we take aim at all things health and longevity and do it in an odd, weird, interesting and highly sarcastic way. Today, we are talking about why mitochondria plasticity is an advantageous trait to craft throughout our metabolic endeavors on this beautiful floating rock. So much so, it may even be a hidden gem on one's quest for health and longevity, right up there with the likes of finding a family member's hidden leftovers in the back of the fridge. Yeah. We're not joking around. So after taking a journey into what having plastic mitochondria actually means, we'll discuss ways to increase its prevalence within, particularly by leveraging the always longevity alluring intermittent fasting and see why strategically partitioning our daily feeding fasting windows can help keep these metaphoric toasters from burning down the house, which is probably useful if you plan on staying there a while. And as always, we will finish up with some tips and resources that you can leverage to implement a protocol into your longevity strategy. Because if you already didn't know, you, me, we humans have all the biological machinery we need to feel effing awesome each and every damn day already within us. That's right. We come out of the womb fully equipped for prosperity and vitality. And it's the inputs we consistently provide throughout life, which tend to get us in trouble. Burning down the pretty cool meat suit house trouble, which we'll talk about. But first, we must touch on why mitochondria flexibility and plasticity is cool for biological school. If you didn't already know, mitochondria are energy producing organelles within each and every one of our cells that synthesize the energy that allows them to function and thus allows us to function. This energy currency we speak of is ATP or adenosine triphosphate. And if you want their origin story, which is really quite a tale, you can check out this deep dive here. But as we've discussed in previous videos, this ancient organelle's real role seems to go much deeper than just producing energy. It also regulates metabolism, calcium, free radical production, which we'll talk about in just a minute, hormone signaling while modulating the immune system and controlling the kill switch for the entire cell or a programmed cell death process known as apoptosis. So it is hard to deny that these biological players got game. And since they are playing 24 seven, literally, they need to be both flexible and efficient. This is where the concept of plasticity and flexibility comes into play. Mitochondria plasticity refers to the ability of this organelle to adapt to different cellular environments and metabolic demands by changing their shape, size, number, and function. And this plasticity is important because it has a big say in maintaining cellular energy homeostasis, responding to stress, and regulating a whole bunch of cellular processes. Now, on the other hand, flexibility is the ease in which our mitochondria can shift energy substrates, most commonly from glucose to fatty acids, an occurrence that has become less abundant with our 24 seven full waking day energy consumption habits. Let's look at some examples. First, exercise. When we move our badonkadonk, the energy demand of muscle increases, which triggers mitochondria plasticity to produce more ATP to meet those demands. This can involve changes in mitochondria size and number, as well as alterations in their metabolic pathways and membrane potential. Similarly, 
during periods of nutrient deprivation or overnutrition, mitochondria can undergo changes that ramp up or down the production of ATP, each coming with unique shifts in function and efficiency. All in all, more plasticity and flexibility is good for biological business because it means that your mitochondria are healthy, fit, efficient, and ready for whatever lies ahead. However, as we often do, this is something that we humans tend to derail. Yeah, can't take us anywhere. Let me explain. Modern society and technology have brought about many comforts. Comforts that we have never experienced in our biological history as a species. A few on the list include tasty treats available 24-7, non-stop digital entertainment, delivery of basically anything in 48 hours, and thus a home that rarely needs to be left. These modern day lifestyle norms have led us down the path of eating a energy dense, nutrient scarce processed diet, staying inside and sedentary for much of the day, and putting sleep on the back burner. A combo that has rates of metabolic disease going up and to the right with a fury that has never been seen before. Which brings us back to our toaster scenario. Because it's straight up silly to have the toaster running all day when we may only need it for a couple of minutes. Total unnecessary risk, right? Well, when we combine the aforementioned energy-dense, nutrient-scarce eating, typically lasting the majority of the waking day, 14 to 16 hours, with the ultra-sedentary behavior, aka sitting on our badonka donk much more than we move it, there's a good chance that we're overloading our mitochondria with fuel that it just has no use for. We've got the power blasting to the point we risk burning down the mitochondrial house, and thus the cellular house. And here's how. Consuming an excess amount of calories or a diet high in energy dense, nutrient scarce processed foods can lead to an increase in free radical leak from our mitochondria. This is because when cells are exposed to high levels of glucose, they generate more energy through cellular respiration with no immediate use for that energy. Energy overload which eventually leads to the increased production of reactive oxygen species and free radicals. And these free radicals, as discussed here, can not only damage the different components within the cell, but when overabundant, damage the mitochondria and its DNA, inching the cell ever so closer to its final act, program cell death. Now, it's worth noting, while dietary factors can very well impact mitochondria function, they are certainly not the only piece of the puzzle. Other lifestyle factors such as exercise, stress, sleep, and environmental toxins can also have a significant impact on mitochondria health and free radical leak. But as the great philosopher Michael Scott once said, knowledge is power. Okay, fine. He said that's what she said, but close enough. And with this knowledge, we gain the power to deploy strategies which allow our mitochondria to get off the sugar drip and enjoy the increased flexibility and plasticity which comes in using fatty acids, creating the internal environment which allows our body to transition with ease, something that has been lost in our snack every 30 minute world. And wouldn't you know it, one of the ways that we can accomplish this is through a strategic meal timing protocol, AKA intermittent fasting. And here's how. Breaking our energy consumption into strategic feeding fasting windows in the name of cellular health and longevity is no new discussion here. You need look no further than the nearly 70 videos we have on the topic in the Fasting 101 playlist. That being said, a deep dive into how a strategic protocol like this impacts the oh so critical dynamics of our mitochondria is a rather new endeavor. So let's see what's going on under the cellular hood. During intermittent fasting, the body's energy metabolism typically shifts from glucose metabolism to fat metabolism, which activates several cellular pathways, including a bunch which alter the dynamics of the mitochondria. And by dynamics, we're talking flexibility and plasticity. This shift in energy metabolism has been shown to increase mitochondrial biogenesis, the production of new mitochondria, 
and improve mitochondria function through various mechanisms, including the activation of cellular longevity pathways, AMPK and SIRT1. These pathways are known for regulating mitochondria dynamics, including their division and recycling, which are essential for the cleanup of weak, damaged, leaky mitochondria through mitophagy, a process that involves the degradation and recycling of cellular components, and the creation of new, healthy, efficient mitochondria, a process known as mitochondrial biogenesis. The cool thing is, initial data suggests that the regulation of these mitochondrial dynamics may be necessary for the beneficial effects of intermittent fasting on health and longevity. For example, a study published in Cell Metabolism showed that intermittent fasting increased mitochondrial biogenesis biogenesis and improved metabolic function in mice by regulating the activity of a mitochondrial fission protein or division protein called DRP1. Another paper published in Nature Communications demonstrated that intermittent fasting induced changes in mitochondrial dynamics were required for the longevity benefits of fasting in a worm aging model. Pretty cool. However, we aren't mice are worms, right? So what does the human data have to say? Well, it hints a lot of the same things. Several studies have now found that intermittent fasting can stimulate the creation of new mitochondria in several tissue types, including skeletal muscle, liver, and the brain. Pretty cool. And on the efficiency front, a 2019 study published in the journal Nutrients found that daily time-restricted feeding improved mitochondrial respiration efficiency and reduced the production of reactive oxygen species in healthy adults. Huh, modulating free radical leak, you don't say. Moving to the topic of recycling, Several studies have also found that intermittent fasting can induce mitophagy across various tissues, with a 2020 paper published in Aging Cell finding that daily time-restricted feeding increased mitophagy in the skeletal muscle of middle-aged adults. Environmentally conscious too, I guess. Finally, on the topic of protection, a 2020 study published in Redox Biology found that intermittent fasting protected against oxidative stress-induced mitochondrial dysfunction in healthy adults. Pretty cool. But it's important to keep in mind that all of this data is still very preliminary, and more human research is always needed. That being said, this certainly adds evidence to reiterate how very important these ancient organelles are for both short-term prosperity and long-term vitality, and how an intermittent fasting strategy can be a piece of the optimization puzzle, but certainly not the only one. Let's talk about what you can do. First, we must start off with the reality of the situation. Although we know fasting does things, properly dosing it for minimal and maximal potential seems to be a near impossible task, as all the research to date has quite a bit of variation in meal timing, food quality, window duration, and baseline health of participants in the study. Thus, it can't go much further than providing high-level evidence that fasting does things, typically good, to our internal energy-producing factories. However, the prescription and the proper dose likely varies, and we just don't have enough data in humans to be super confident in any one single protocol. That being said, implementing structured meal timing into your day may be a very real and effective first step into getting your internal power stations operating more efficiently. Thus, taking a slow and methodical approach, tuning your feeding fasting windows over time to fit your unique lifestyle variables may be a very worthwhile pursuit, as well as a secret sauce for sustainability. The place to start is always with an observation period where you baseline your current feeding window, aka when you typically begin consuming any energy-containing items, and when you stop. Interestingly, the data suggests that this is often way longer than we intuitively suspect. From there, setting practical targets based on your baseline and goals, for example, aiming for a 12, then 10, then eight hour daily feeding window, is an approach that will help you normalize the lifestyle change. Condensing that feeding window 15 minutes on each end over the course of weeks and months goes a long way. 
Remember, the number one goal here is to make it sustainable, so take your time. Maybe, after a little experimentation, you find that a 10-hour protocol fits you best, which is perfectly fine, and likely brings along some increased mitochondrial flexibility and plasticity in the process. I mean, when you think about it, it's a pretty simple and doable intervention that has a whole hell of a lot of cellular and metabolic upside with very little downside. Worth a noodle on, if you ask me. If you are interested in what I currently do, you can see my present day strategy here. Now, it's also important to know that fasting is not the only tool that you have, and probably isn't even the most powerful, at least according to the data. In reality, the ideal mitochondria boosting scenario is serenading them with a cocktail of healthy habits, including badonka donking, aka regular exercise, a nutrient-rich real whole food diet, high-quality circadian-aligned sleep, stress management, and a healthy environment. As we always talk about, there is no silver bullet in this health and longevity game. And that goes for mitochondria vitality too. But if there were, despite all of the benefits we just talked about with intermittent fasting, moving your badonka donk in an intentional methodical way, aka exercise, may be the very best thing we can do for these little energy producers, as it has shown promise to be an even bigger driver of mitochondria health and efficiency. Which makes you wonder, what if you did both? If you want more on how to keep your mitochondria in tip-top shape, we have a fully loaded breakdown here. Because at the end of the day, your cellular and metabolic efficiency lies solely in the hands of you. Which I hope you take as effing empowering. Because this is an efficiency that not only modulates your present day mood, feel, cognition, and physiological state, but also your odds, likelihood, and probability of feeling how you're capable of feeling effing awesome for the long run. So control what you can control. Do what you can with what you got. And for heaven's sake, don't leave the toaster on 24-7 in the kitchen. Metabolic safety first.